Aloha, I'm Jim Hagerman and this is my lab. Today's topic is equalization, specifically phonostage equalization. Why is it there? Well simply, the signal that comes off a record is pre-emphasized, right? It has a lot of treble and very little bass. So a phonostage needs to decorrect this with a de-emphasis, right? So that what goes in comes out and you have a nice flat frequency response. The main reason for this is that the signal, the way a, a cartridge works is the magnetic and the field as, as the needle wiggles back and forth. It's a velocity mo modulation. So the output is kind of constant velocity. So anyway, that's why equalization curves were required is so the cutter head wouldn't like rip the vinyl to pieces you know for low frequencies anyhow the equalization curve specifically RIAA looks like this and this was introduced in 1955 because before that there were all kinds of different curves so depending on who you bought your record from you know it could have all kinds of different turnovers and cuts so back in 95, I designed this, my R, inverse RIA filter. And that basically allows me in the lab to recreate what comes off a record. So I can take a signal generator into one of these, into the phono stage and out, and input and output should theoretically be exactly the same if I got the correction done right. Now you'll notice one thing here is that the RIA curve doesn't actually specify what happens in the infrasonic and ultrasonic regions. So that kind of leaves a little gray area and it kind of implies that the cutter head needs infinite gain and infinite bandwidth. Something we know isn't going to happen in real life. So that's why I added the 50 kilohertz pole. Right. This was first identified in the early 90s by Alan Wright in his preamp cookbook. So he calls it the Neumann pole. And it turns out Neumann cutting head amplifiers actually have two poles at 50 kilohertz. So the original RIA spec kind of looks like this, you know, infinite gain, infinite bandwidth. But in reality, what's happening is something like this. Okay. Now in my filter, I just included one pole. So I'm, you know, back to using this. And I think it's a reasonable compromise between real life and kind of overdoing it. You know, I want to restore some of the top end airiness and keep the phase shift of the upper harmonics of things like piano and violin and cymbals intact, right? So the relationship in time doesn't get split too much creating kind of you know a synthetic artificial sound anyhow now that we have the filter um, here's some examples uh, I took these scope photos probably 25 years ago showing the exact situation I took a music input signal ran it through the filter and then I'll put it the phono stage. And you can see the two waveforms are identical. They're split apart. On the right side, you know, it's still two waveforms, but you only see one because input and output are exactly the same. And that means your equalization is spot on. You've got it correct. Okay? Now normally, and here's the response from my bugle phono stage. Uh, it's got a very flat frequency response. It rolls off at 15 hertz and then it's good to a 100 kilohertz plus and it's very flat um, it's good to within about 0.5 db now do i need 0 0.001 db accuracy not really if you look at any frequency response from say a headphone or a speaker you know they're on a 1 db per division scale and and the you know the response is all over the place so 0.001 dB from a phono stage really isn't going to help you any because you're going to have to live with your speaker in the end. So, uh, diverting a little bit, let me, you know, th that's the frequency response. So when we test, 
you know, I can look at all frequencies and as I sweep frequencies, you know, the output should remain constant in amplitude. But that takes time and it's kind of the pain in the butt. What I do is I do a square wave. This is so much faster. It gives you a snapshot in time. You know, a square wave in should give you a square wave out. So, if I show you the R cavern, this is designed for old phono stages plus modern, right? So it does RIAA. It also has the turnover and cuts of 78s. And as you can see by this table, there were a lot of different, you know, equalizations before it got standardized. So this photo stage allows you to compensate from it. So if you look at the output, you know, here I moved the turnover to 700 hertz instead of 500, and I can go the other direction. So, you know, you can clearly see how it, you know, you get more top end. And same thing with cut. This is way in the treble region. You'll see the, the high frequency spike of the leading edge, and that's all right so it's just a very quick snapshot in time and you can see what's going on you know it's a square wave at all frequencies no matter what I do right so that's very nicely equalized now the the cut is a little weird so here's a chart that shows the relationship between DB cut and frequency um, and you'll see the RIA is at 2.122 kilohertz, and that corresponds to minus 13.7 dB cut. So that's what you see here, right? When you dial it in right, it's a nice flat response. Okay, so let me show you, you know, that's how the system works. For testing, it, if I make a mistake building something, it immediately picks out an error. And let me show you that. I'm going to fire up a cornet with the wrong tubes in it, just to, you know, give you an example here. Okay, sorry that took so long. It's got a 45 second turn on delay for the high voltage. But here you can see that it's way off. There's a downward slope showing that the turnover is wrong, the lower, and then the high frequency cut is like, what is that, right? This is not a square wave, so I immediately know something is wrong. So let me put in the correct tubes and see what happens. Okay, we're back, and boom, you can see. Get the right tubes in there, you got a very perfect square wave at all frequencies, and of course, if I went to sine waves, again, that would be constant amplitude at every frequency. So, great indication that things are working. Signal generator, into a filter, through the phone to stage and out. This is how I know it's working. So I can ship this unit. That's all for now. Until next time, mahalo.